what should right. we start off with? About funky chicken? Yes, we do that three times, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the programme. The funky chicken. Yes, yes. well, it's our name. Fine. So you're going to show me the movement? Yeah, all right, um, let's start with the movement. Perhaps if I give you a, uh, something to give a tempo. Okay. Funky chicken, so... No. Let's see. OK, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, that's not bad for practising, is it, actually? No. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, bass line. Here's a... is a... Uh, some disco bass sound. Yeah. Um, it's the sound of someone playing the bass with the thumb, slapping it. Right. Um, and you can play it in a, that, that, that sort of yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Do you yes, like that yes, sound? That's fine, yeah. Um, I'll try and think of a bass line then. Let's see. Let's try bass line. One, two, three, four. Three, four. One. Yes, that's all right for practicing. Let me try it off the speed. Baseline and a tempo, and the obvious missing element is the drums. So I started programming the drums into the computer, drum by drum. And then when that was done, which probably took most of a day, we could play the bass line and the drums together, and there you have the basis of the rhythm track. The main melody is coming from the brass, which are playing a, a repeated disco phrase. While they're playing it, I'm adding in some sustained chords on the electric piano to give it some harmony. you want to bring something completely different and really let rip. So that's when the guitar solo comes in. I like that sort of crazy sound and crazy playing which you find in a lot of 60s music. The sort of playing that Eric Clapton used to use. For the last three or four years, I would say 90% of my composing has been done using a computer system of one kind or another and programming the music into the computer as opposed to recording it onto a tape recorder. This has quite a few advantages. 
firstly, any part of any track can be edited. You can make a change, let's say, in the bass line and immediately hear that that needs to make a change in, in one of the drums, which then implies that an instrument should come in at this point. That sort of a process you can't really do if you're working on tape because everything takes a lot longer to edit and to record and to drop in and drop out. This one was about hummingbirds. They, they decided to call the program Birds of the Sun God, with a mind to the very colourful iridescent wings that the hummingbirds have. Unfortunately, hummingbirds very often occupy uh, rather dingy rainforests, and uh, a lot of their shots really didn't show up the colours too much, so I think they were looking to the music to be very colourful in its place. I remember at one time actually using a very old ARP synthesizer, one of the old synthesizers of the workshop, uh, with an automatic trigger on it, uh, on, on a sort of mandolin sound. So I started off with that. What you can do is just set up basic, really rather boring sound these days um, of a single plucked electronic note, and you can get it to repeat itself over and over again. Now, obviously. Something that's rather nice about, uh, if you like, a whole room full of people playing strummed mandolin is the fact that there's going to be a lovely lot of um, changing of phase relationships between one instrument and the other, and, and the thick texture is going to be in the playing of all these different strums, as it were, against one another. So uh, to simulate that, I laid this automatic note onto different tracks of a multi-track tape recorder. But having actually got it onto the multi-track machine, you can then sample it into the sampling keyboard so that in the end you can actually play the whole strummed A minor chord by just pressing one note. Well, then it follows, of course, that you can actually play different minor chords by playing other notes. And if you actually arrange it so that the, the sound dies away gradually after you've released the key, and you arrange the next sound to approach at the same rate, you can change from one key to another, and there'll be a most beautiful mix of chords as you pass from one chord to another. The opening music really set up the idea of the way hummingbirds seem to be so colourful, but in fact, actually, their wings are black. The colour actually is um, as a result of the light being reflected in different ways. And consequently, they all look rather like shot silk, which gives you a very good hint as to how you could start making a sound for that effect, because in electronic music terms, there are quite a few ways in which you can get a sound to actually change during the course of its playing. 
so that it's very similar to maybe moving material against light and seeing different colours coming off it. There's quite a similarity in a way because you can actually move a sound and hear different harmonics. And uh, in a way that was quite a strong relationship between the visuals and the sound to my mind. So I, I started off by making a sound which I ended up by calling light dance. Um, by using the Macintosh computer to edit um, a DX sound, which is rather nice because you can actually do it all very visually. Fork-tailed wood nymph sapphire-fronted emerald, tourmaline sun angel, and ruby topaz. The names alone tell of man's fascination with hummingbirds and their jewel-like plumage. They're the most agile of all birds in the air, and yet they're the servants of plants. Mm -hmm. 